Hey guys, Greg here, Bone Tactical, and today I'm going to discuss how to escape and evade powerful people and or government organizations. We're going to talk about some a really serious subject here, and it's basically escape and evasion on a whole nother level. It's changing your identity, becoming a new person, escaping something or someone that might be pursuing you. We're going to talk about some real simple basics and we're going to talk about as deep as it gets on this subject. So this is going to be a very extensive video. It's going to be a compilation of information that exists nowhere else on the internet. Okay, so stay tuned. Some of you may know my story. Some of you may know that I was considered to be a fugitive on the run for a few years with a lot of very powerful people rogue factions of the US government and even some powerful organized crime elements searching for me and unable to find me. So this is stuff that I've learned along the way through having to use this information to survive and I will share this what I know from what I've learned but I must say that I am not recommending that anyone use this information. In fact, I'm saying please don't use this information to escape arrest warrants or to evade justice for something that you may have done. In my particular case, I was seeking justice and trying to escape injustice, rogue factions of the US government and corrupt law enforcement. So I'm not sharing this information for you to use to escape a warrant, for example, for a crime that you committed, although you could. So I'm asking you, please don't, and I'm sharing that as a disclaimer. So today we're gonna to discuss 14 points, all right? 14 separate points that are all extremely important, and every single one of these 14 points are necessary to escape and evade, all right? They are necessary to know. The first thing to know is uh, you have to assess your situation. The first thing that you have to do is assess your situation. It's point number one is assess your situation in regards to who you are running from or who you are escaping from or who you are trying to avoid and why. So number one, point number one is to assess your situation as to the who and the why. So this basically means that you're gonna have to determine who and you're running from, whether it's a powerful organized crime element, the US government, your local government, whether you got to determine why you're changing your identity or why you're going off grid for whatever reason and you need to assess their power okay how much power does this person have and you always need to err on the side of caution and you have to assess why you're leaving if you're leaving because you have a warrant if you're leaving because someone wants to kill you if you're leaving because you just want to start over and start a new life if you're leaving because you have bad publicity if you're leaving because you're a business owner and you made a lot of money and you have good publicity and you're changing your identity or your look or your theme or your lifestyle or your life because you have maybe you were a drug addict and had bad friends and want to start over maybe you made a bunch of money maybe you won the lottery and you want to start over without people knowing that you're rich so these are all possibilities that you need to determine but what I'm gonna give you is I'm gonna give you the things that you need to do or things that you can do no matter who's looking for you even if it's the most powerful people in the world like I had in my case the US government being considering that the US government can be considered some of the most powerful the US government's very easily considered one of the most powerful organizations in the world with the most at their disposal, the most resources at their disposal, especially since at one point it was a joint task force between Germany, El Salvador, Spain, the US government, and US marshals, and even branches of the US government that have no oversight. So they, have, they can do whatever they want, which in my case they did whatever they wanted. And if I could escape and evade, clandestine branches of the US government then anything else from there is easy. So let's keep that in mind first because you have to know, I'm gonna give you all of the things that you need to know of ways that people can find you 
And from there, you'll have to decide whether the people that are looking for you or whether the people you don't want to recognize you, whether they are actively pursuing you or whether they're not actively pursuing you, you'll have to decide how to what lengths you are willing to go and to what lengths you are capable of going because it is not easy and it requires drastic changes. So we'll get into those changes and what it requires right now. The first thing you need to do is determine whether you are willing and able to go to those lengths that you will need to go based off of why you're wanting to change and who is trying to find you. Number two is an assessment of your skills and abilities and your economic resources. So in order to change your identity or become a new person, it's very important that you have financial resources and or a skill set. You basically need to be independently wealthy because there's going to be a period of time that you have to spend a lot of money and there's going to be a period of time that it's going to be very difficult, if not impossible, to make money. The money that you're making now will be nearly impossible to make once you've completely become a new person. It's like starting over, starting from zero and nothing comes easy. So... First off, you need to know that you need to have money to do this. If you don't have money, it is possible to do because in my case, I did it at the beginning. I had a little bit of money, but my assets were frozen. My places of business were seized and raided and I very quickly had nothing. So for a period of time, I had to start over and operate with no money. So it is possible, but if you're doing it without money, you need a skill set. You need to have a very advanced skill set. And what do I mean by that? Because you need a skill set to, sur you need money to survive, you need to eat, okay? You need a skill set that can feed you. You need something somebody else wants. You need to be able to work in some way to earn a living. If not, then you would at least need to be able to provide food for yourself. So if you are planning on going into a vast expanse of wilderness and going off grid that way, then you need a bushcraft skill set so you can feed yourself, so you can build shelter and fire and water. If you're going to a third world country or an urban area, you to becoming a new person, changing your identity, etc., and you don't have a bunch of money, then you will need to have some sort of a skill like welding, roofing, building houses, construction experience. The more skills you have, the easier it will be to transition into a new lifestyle into a new life and to make and to survive doing it. So number three, we will discuss now, we will start getting into the things that will basically get you caught and the things that you have to completely change and or leave behind. We start off discussing your digital footprint. We all have a digital footprint. Every time that you use your cell phone, every time you make a purchase with your credit card, every time you watch Netflix, something watch something on your Netflix account every time you purchase something off Amazon every time you log into whatever organization that you're with every time you put a Facebook Instagram post anytime you look at something on Instagram all that data is shared stored logged okay anytime you walk around in any kind of a city or town anywhere in the world there's video cameras on ATMs banks there's video cameras at stadiums airports and all of that information is logged, okay? All of that information is logged with the potential of being hacked and used against you. So first thing you need to do is based on the assessment of your situation and how many people are looking for you, whether actively or passively, if they are actively looking for you, it's very easy to put your facial recognition software or retinal information into a database that has all of these cameras and you'll never be able to go to a city or town again with your face exposed. So that is all stuff with your digital footprint. So be aware of your digital footprint. There's cameras everywhere today and you may think, oh, well, it's just a camera. It's not recording. Well, it's a camera. It's probably recording. If it's recording, it's probably being stored in a database. If it's stored in a database, it's probably shared with the NSA and who knows whatever other organization it's being shared with if it's being recorded even in real if it's being recorded and not being saved to some sort of a hard drive it's anybody with a little bit of a skill set can st still hack into it 
and get that information from that camera. So it depends on how hard somebody's looking for you. If you're not wanted by the US government, if it's something smaller, then you may not have to worry about that. But we're gonna get into all of those things and you definitely have to consider that everywhere you go, there's cameras. At minimum, you have to get rid of your cell phone, get rid of your credit cards, log out, or if not log out of all accounts, maybe give your account information away or write your Netflix account down somewhere and leave them at bus stations. That's disinformation. We'll talk about disinformation, but you'll never be able to use those accounts again. You'll never be able to use bank accounts again, credit cards again, none of that stuff. You'll never be able to use that again if we're talking about starting over or escaping or evading. Now that we discussed digital footprints, number four is physical footprints. And it's just like a digital footprint, but it's real. It's what most of us understand a lot better. It's an actual physical footprint. It goes anywhere from physical tracking. Somebody might be tracking you using dogs or old school methods, like an actual person that knows how to track in physical media to see your actual footprint of where you were walking. They can judge your size and your weight based off of a footprint. They can judge the way that you walk based off of your stride length and all of that stuff, which is also something they, they can search through digital programs on a, on a digital camera. They can look for size and even the way you walk. So they, all that stuff can be searched for both digitally and physically. Your physical footprint is your DNA, your fingerprints, your retinal scan, your alignment of your blood vessels in your body, all of that stuff, your dental records, all of that is a physical footprint that can be paired with digital footprint or can be searched for even in a grid down scenario or without any kind of technical information whatsoever. So dogs, scent, the sound of your voice, making noises. If you're, the further you get away from people and civilization, the more you transfer from digital footprint and having to worry about your digital footprint into your physical footprint. So you're gonna now have to start worrying about people that can track you physically or dogs that are trained to your scent. And then we'll also discuss with stuff like that, that's why you don't leave stuff behind because fingerprints and DNA can be used against you. And if you leave a shirt behind somewhere, the smell that you left on the shirt can be used against you. The dogs, once they get close enough to find the shirt that you left behind, the dogs will will be shown the shirt and then the dogs will find you very quickly. So that's all stuff. If you are in a situation where you're worrying about physical tracking of dogs or something like that, then you're gonna to have to do a lot of research and learn on that, okay? I do have some videos up that briefly touch on, in some of my gray man videos, we discuss physical tracking a little bit. But the best is to not get to that point or to educate yourself on physical tracking because that is an entire course that I could teach, not just a video. But it's something you need to keep in mind and I'm gonna get more into depth about what you can do and what you need to do right now. As I hinted, number five is leave everything behind. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Leave your cell phone, leave your credit cards, leave your computer. And don't just leave it behind, you have to destroy anything that can be used against you. And anything you leave behind can be used against you, even if it's garbage, because your garbage has your fingerprints and your DNA on it. Your computer has data in it that can be used against you in a trial. In the fact, in the case that you do get caught by whoever's looking for you, they can use it against you while they're looking for you to help find you anything you leave behind, and they can leave and they can use it against you in a situation in court, possibly one day. So don't leave anything behind. Nothing. Don't leave not even social media posts. Try and remove everything you can from the internet. Try and remove everything you can. Close all of your accounts. Delete your information first. Go on Facebook, delete all your pictures, then delete your account. Facebook basically has now made it almost impossible to delete your pictures from their database anyway. But at least, it, like I said, it's the level of who's looking for you. Just because of all this stuff can be used against you doesn't mean it will be. But always err on the side of caution because all of this stuff can be used against you. So it's better to just get rid of everything you can. If it's just a very simple case of you making a bunch of money and wanting to start over, which is the easiest way that you can start over, you can change your name legally and you can move to a new place and we'll get into a lot of the skills on that, but you still need to destroy everything you can from your old life. I know it's gonna be sentimentally difficult 
but you have to do it. Don't bring anything with you. Number six is what to bring with you. Now I know I just said don't bring anything with you, but there's exceptions to every rule. What to bring with you should be all new stuff. It shouldn't be anything personalized to you or any way traceable to you. What you leave behind needs to be destroyed. We discussed that in number five. This is what you should bring with you, okay? This is the gray man bag. So it fits any environment, anybody that's gonna be leaving, anybody that needs to, to get out of town or get out of Dodge, this bag will serve you well because it, if I'm a construction worker, I can carry this bag. If I'm a business man in a suit, I can carry this bag. If I'm a very large or very small person, if I'm white, black, or Latino, or whatever color, I can carry this bag. So that's the whole point. That And that bag in particular has all of the survival gear that you may need, all of the survival gear that you may want, everything that you could possibly think about wanting and needing. That bag is available for sale at bonetactical.com with the items inside of it that are needed for survival and for your new life that are the minimum items. So I'm not gonna waste any time in this video discussing what's in the bag because what's in the bag is in other videos here on the channel and at bonetactical.com sold as the ultimate wilderness survival bug out bag, something along those lines. Anyway, it's all everything you need to bring with you. Number seven. Okay, number seven. Now we get into the really talking about how to make the changes and what changes to make. Now, number seven is create a disguise and create a new identity. The number one rule is that you create something new for yourself that you're comfortable with. So when I, I hate to use the word disguise. I really do. I don't want to, but I'm saying that so you guys understand where we're going with this. But your disguise is not your disguise. You're not actually creating a disguise. What you're doing is you're creating a new persona. And I've got an entire series of gray man here on the channel. And that's in, essentially, this is gray man theory. You're now, you're not actually changing anything about you. You're not putting on a disguise. You're changing everything about you. You are becoming a new person and you have to be so confident with this. It's not putting on one of those stupid sunglasses with the nose and the fake mustache, okay? No, we're talking about making whatever changes you're comfortable with. Some very simple things are if you have, it can't be complicated because you have to do this every day for the rest of your life. If you have long hair, cut your hair short. If you have a beard, cut your beard off. Those are some very simple changes. Now, going along the lines of facial recognition software, the biggest digital footprint that you're gonna have to fight against is cameras being around you everywhere you go, everybody with a cell phone. You can't go anywhere in a city or in a group in an area where there's people and not be recorded. You just can't do it anymore. And the biggest problem now is facial recognition software. Now that people are partnered with Facebook, everything, everybody, people are putting posts everywhere. All this hits a database somewhere. Anybody that can hack can record this information. Every public place has cameras. All of those cameras are accessible and now we can just run facial recognition software and find anybody anywhere like that. So the issue now is really, it doesn't matter. You're gonna have to grow a beard. You're gonna have to wear a hat. You're gonna have to wear glasses. And then the biggest sunglasses in the daytime, not at night, obviously. And the biggest thing is, is now with the coronavirus, it's, I wish that coronavirus had happened before when I was trying to do my when I was on the run, because you can wear a mask everywhere you go now. Crazy. It makes it so easy because you can wear a mask everywhere. So now it's just a million times easier. Include a mask, wear a mask everywhere you go, obviously. Think about this facial recognition software and retinal scans. So you're gonna have sunglasses anytime that you're around people. You're gonna have, don't travel at night because you can't wear a sunglass, sunglasses at night. You're gonna to have to wear a hat and sunglasses, have a beard and a mask, all right? There we go. The, you're gonna to wanna to change your, the way you talk. You're gonna to wanna to change the way you walk. You're gonna to wanna to change, you're gonna become a new person. So create yourself a new identity, think about it, study it, use some of your original facts, but some stuff that maybe is obscure, not a lot of people knew, or some stuff, some of your actual information about you so that you can remember your new identity and become your new identity, 
Okay, become your, you have to become your new identity. You can't change so much that you're not comfortable with it. And you've got to really become confident with your new identity. You need to learn your new name, respond to your new name, have a background story. You need to understand this new person. You've got to invent your whole childhood, your whole family structure, and you've got to remember it all. And it can't change. When one person asks you, it can't change to the other person. So that's a huge thing. And it's just going to take constant study and practice and understanding. And that's why we say don't change too much because you have to remember it all. And people are going to be asking you when you run into people and stuff like that, you need a cover story. You need to not draw attention to yourself. We will continue to discuss in the future, I'll, in the future of this video, I'll discuss a little bit how most people end up getting caught is very, very small mistakes like what we're talking about. They bump into a cop. They decide, you know what, screw it. I'm going to go drinking at a bar today and they let their cover down and they get caught or they lose their temper and get into an argument with someone and the police get called and they, they get their ID run and they get caught. Or, you know, very small things like that. Everything even down to having your cover story and memorizing it and being confident with it and convincing yourself that you're the new person. Forget everything about your old life and remember and learn everything about your new life. Number eight is disinformation. So disinformation is dangerous, but also is really crucial at the same time. Disinformation is dangerous because if done improperly, disinformation can lead the people looking for you to you immediately. But if you do it correctly, it'll lead them on a wild goose chase. So before you log out of your social media, send some messages to somebody that you don't plan on going to see and tell them, Hey, I'm taking, I'm, I've had a rough go at things. I'm shutting down shop here and I'm going to go, I'm coming to visit. Wait for me. I'll be there soon. Somebody that you don't plan on going to talk, see or going plan on talking to ever again. Another thing is, is all old contacts, your parents, your family, your friends, your girlfriend, your ex-girlfriend, your old friends, you have to cut them all off completely. So well, we will get into that, but as far as disinformation goes, your cell phone, you can, le you can give your cell phone to somebody, your old cell phone. You can go as far as to, uh, if, you've got a, if you're on probation, house arrest, you've got a tracking device, you can reconnect the, the ankle bracelet, you can reconnect it to your dog, to a pet, to an animal because they have a heat sensor in there. You can put your cell phone on a, you know, on a bus, on a public transportation. You can, there's all kinds of disinformation, but you've got to be very careful with this information because you are, anytime you put information out there, that, that information can, might be recognized as disinformation and then trace back to you because in order to leave your cell phone somewhere, you have to take your cell phone to where you're going to leave it in order to check into a hotel in your name or reserve a hotel in your name, you have to make that phone call. You have to do all that. So be careful with the connections that the way you're doing have always use disinformation, but use it wisely. You've got to be three steps ahead of whoever's following you. If you're two steps ahead away and you use disinformation and they've f realized this disinformation and trace it back to you, then you're caught. So three steps ahead with this information. Number nine is avoid airports, avoid first world, what we will call first world public transportation, avoid any kind of a public gathering, concerts, okay? You've got, nowadays, you don't only have police scanning concerts for people with warrants. You've got sniper teams scanning concerts for people with bombs. You've got s sniper teams scanning and, and, and uh, you've got professionals, you know, intelligence agencies scanning crowds, any kind of political gathering, stadium, sporting event, concert, you've got intelligence people scanning the crowd for terrorism, for terrorists. You've got police scanning for warrants. You've got all of that stuff. So and those are super high risk areas if you're trying to escape and avoid. Anytime that there's what we call first world transportation is planes, trains, buses in first world countries because they're so organized and they're just running everything. They're scanning everybody. They're, they're beta testing um, subconscious uh, stimulus software and programs at some airports where they're transmitting images and sounds in the music and, and television and stuff like that, where they're looking at and reading people's reactions to see if they can, they're beta testing software 
to to where active shooters have a certain kind of a reaction to certain subconscious images or sounds and then they're tr trying to create a database of the reactions so they can further track people and so they can tell what people are going to be more likely to be dangerous people and who's dangerous people and so they're just there's so much testing going on i've been uh even after i was cleared of all charges even after i was extradited from germany even after uh, i i was uh completely exonerated of everything i have i had two different times i had swat team and u.s marshals storm the gate when i was at the airport just, I'm talking about full on, looked like a military operation, full on sw p people coming out of everywhere with carbines and MP7s and full kit storming all surrounding me at the gate when I'm sitting waiting for the thing uh, because they forgot to take my, my facial recognition uh, information out of the system at an airport. That happened twice. It took, there was my, I was, my information my retinal scans and my and my facial structure information was so deep into all of this automated systems that the that the border patrol local SWAT team and US marshals were getting all notifications that this most wanted person is at the airport formulate a mission and apprehend him so i was apprehended you know sitting there at the airport two different times swarmed by looked like I said, a military operation. And there I am sitting there like, hey guys, what's going on? And they're scared. They think that they've got one of the most dangerous people in the world. And I'm like, please just don't shoot because we're going to get this figured out. You know, of course they kept me for a few hours, long enough to miss my flight both times. And then had to do all their checking with the, you know, one person calls their superior who calls their superior who calls their superior and finally realizes, oh, well, is we don't actually have any reason to arrest this guy. So, you know, of course I wasn't there reading what was written in the system. I was there in a jail cell waiting to be released, but uh, but I can, I can read enough between the lines and I do have some contacts, luckily still, that, uh, that were able to tell me, yeah, you know, you were so, you were in, you were flagged in so many databases that it was actually a lot of work to get you removed from all of these databases as a threat. So just in order for me to go back to the airport was uh, very stressful because all of these Customs and Border Patrol, U.S. Marshals, FBI, CIA, NSA, everybody has, their, has me alerted in their system. Even uh, international organizations and police departments in other countries all have me flagged in their system as a most wanted person. So all of those organizations now have to go back in and start removing them. So it was, uh, I spent a couple of years actually, after I spent a couple of years on the run, I spent a couple of years traveling and having to go to these places and actually get arrested and then have all of that information set straight and then have them remove me from the system, remove me from their most wanted lists and all that stuff. So that was a huge, uh, obviously very stressful situation as well. And I talk a little bit about that in, in a video where I discuss PTSD because every time I would go to a, one of these areas that I'm telling you guys not to go to, I would get stormed and swarmed by law enforcement and arrested every time I'd go to a bus station, train station, airport, something like that. Anytime I'd try to cross a border, anytime I'd get pulled over. No, guys, in, in your case, the reason that we're talking about this is you can't go to public places because even if you're not as high profile as I was, even if you're not high profile, anybody who can hack into the system can put some sort of a, a notice. Anybody with a, enough skills and knowledge can hack into a system and put up and, and have it ping, have that system ping your information, your bio features, your fingerprints, your retinal scan, your face can, can ping and be basically uh, notified of whoever's looking for you. So just know that you've got to really avoid those public places like the plague and the hat and sunglasses thing may work, but there's also the other end of the spectrum where having a hat and sunglasses can 
can make you a target as well. So it's just it's better to just avoid all of those places. You have to avoid any contact with law enforcement of any type whatsoever. Any government or public officials is the best. Just avoid them. And just so you know, your retinal scan now can be read like a hundred feet away. They can read uh they can read your they can read the retina of your eye like a fingerprint from like a hundred feet away. So just stay away from anybody who has access to that. And now you can buy the bio boxes off the internet. Anybody can buy them. So anybody looking for you just that's the, the best thing is to stay away from people. So we're now we're leading up to where you should go now that we're talking about what you have to do, how to travel first, and then we're gonna talk about where you should go. We talked a little bit about getting rid of everything. Obviously, you have to get rid of your old cell phone completely. We talked about making a decision of whether you're gonna use it for disinformation or just burn it or destroy it. It's probably best burned, destroyed, put in the microwave, all that stuff, and uh, completely destroyed because any information you have in there can be used against you. Even if it's not used to find you, it can be used against you. When obviously you have to use burner phones now, your new lifestyle, no, no, no matter what, you've got to use burner phones. So if somebody's looking for you, only burner phones. That's cash paid, prepaid minutes. And you got to realize with a phone, when you call somebody, if you, even if you're on a burner phone, if I call my ex-girlfriend, okay, they're, they're going to be waiting for her, me to call her. So now they have my burner phone, they ping, they triangulate my address and they, and they come arrest me because I, because even though everything was clean from my end, they are, you can't call anybody from your old life. Okay. So that's another thing. You can't contact anybody from your old life ever again. The phone is only safe if you don't use it to log in, if you don't surf the internet, because they're going to know all of your old habits. We'll discuss that here in a minute as well, but they'll, if they're really, really looking for you, they can, they know that you're a person that's really into um, Chinese food or that's really into some weird type of, uh, of horticulture or bird watching. And they're going to watch for somebody that's getting on the internet, searching for your favorite species of bird. Okay. And that's, that's really advanced. It requires a lot of money and a lot of effort to do those kind of searches for people, but it's possible, all right? So don't don't use the internet, don't search for anything. You've gotta change everything about yourself, including your hobbies. If you love redheaded woodpeckers, you don't love redheaded woodpeckers anymore, okay? So this is number 11, to only use burner phones. Use prepaid burner phones, obviously pay in cash or trade, because they only, you don't have a bank account anymore, you don't have a, you don't have a credit card anymore. You're only paying cash or you're trading something that you have. And you, since you don't have anything, you're paying cash. So you're paying cash. You may have stashes around with gold or valuable objects, guns, ammo, whatever. You may have some stashes in some places. It's always good to have stashes or, you know, if you have stashes stashed somewhere, then you can use those to trade for cell phones, stuff like that. Have somebody you don't know, uh, you know, go to a, low income part of town, pay somebody to, to buy you a cell phone, whatever, put it in their name, who knows. But on the move, use it for a short period of time and get rid of it. Also, if you have a cell phone, you can be chased, you can, it can be tr your voice recognition, voice recognition software can be traced back to you. So you've got a, when you're not using that burner phone, the battery should be out of the phone and disconnected. If you can't remove the battery from the phone, that phone can be accessed at any time to be used for voice recognition software. The audio can be recorded, the video can be recorded and searched. So whatever phone you have, you need to use it when you need to use it and then get rid of it. Okay, destroy it and get rid of it or use it for disinformation. But remember, if you're giving away disinformation and they don't have any kind of an idea where you're at, then that disinformation will lead them back to you. So you have to be very smart with this information. Cell phone use was number 11. Number 12 is pay cash or barter, all right? We discussed that in detail, but that's number 12, pay cash or barter, don't use a credit card for anything. 13 is transportation, number 13 is transportation. Transportation is very complicated. We did discuss that transportation, you can't use any kind of what we call first world transportation, nothing organized. If you're using third world transportation, it needs to be in a third world country where you pay cash to get on a bus that nobody knows who's on the bus and the bus and it's dangerous because third world transportation is always a target for organized crime, local gangs, stuff like that. So it's always a trade-off. The best way is to 
do everything with cash. Number 13 leads into number 14 because number 14 is build a completely new contact network. You can't really do anything on your own. You've got to get somewhere and start from ground zero, start, start over. You've got to start mingling and meeting people somehow without hitting all of those zones like train stations, bus stops, concerts, bar. Well, bars, maybe bars and nightclubs, but the problem with bars and clubs is the, the hat and sunglasses doesn't really work there. So if you're, go, if you're meeting people, you pretty much are going to want to, unfortunately, if you're choosing to go on the run, then a lot of times the people you're going to be in having contact with in your new network is going to also be people who are in, uh, in a bad line of life. Okay. So they're going to be, uh, street people, uh, people that are involved with illegal activities, because if you're on the run, then you may be now an illegal person. So finishing the discussion of transportation, you need to have a vehicle that's legal and registered, but not to you. Okay. You need to have a vehicle that's legal and registered. If you don't have contacts, there are contacts who can give you all the way up to new social security number, new ID. You can go to a different country, which is what I did was go to different countries and then build local contacts through my skill set that would be able to give me legal citizenship, passport, residency, all that kind of stuff in, in the country and be able to completely operate under a, under a new name. If that's not something you can do, then you've got to go for a while without using anything. There's a lot all over Europe. You can pay cash and you can travel unrestricted but you've got to make sure that you're in a registered legal vehicle because anytime that you hit police, they are in Germany, for example, they will arrest you and put you in prison in Germany until they find out who you are. If they, if they don't know who you are and they can't, and you can't prove who you are at, a, especially out into areas like Bayern and out into the country where they're old school and they notice everything. They see any people who aren't from there and they immediately report them to the police. The police come arrest them and they find out who you are from jail. So it's so complicated, guys, but you have to build a network somehow and you've got to respect all of the points that we're talking about. The vehicle, you've got to figure out how to get a vehicle that's legal in somebody's name who, isn't, who doesn't have a warrant. You can't just assume a dead person's social security number or their identity because they're dead or... You, you may assume somebody's identity that has a warrant. So you can't just steal a vehicle because the vehicle's only gonna work for a little while. If you're stealing vehicles, you gotta steal a vehicle every couple hours because as soon as that vehicle's reported stolen, then they're searching for the vehicle. So you've gotta get a girlfriend, get a boyfriend, all right? Wherever you end up going, who's a good person, trustworthy and not with a criminal record, so that you can put everything in that person's name, all right? Because you're you're gonna have to tr get around and you're gonna have to drive a legal, registered, up-to-date, everything vehicle that doesn't have broken tail lights, nothing wrong with it. And another reason why you've gotta have money because you've gotta be on the up and up, but it's gotta all be in somebody else's name. And it can't be any in anybody's name from your old life. So number 13 was discussing transportation. That's how to do it. And how to do it is through number 14, which is build a new network of contacts. The way to build a new network of contacts is through money. Number two, through money or a skill set, leads into number 14, which is building your new contact network either with money or with a skill set. Being able to be a personable person and making a girlfriend is a skill set in and of itself. Or making new friends, that's part of the skill set. So that's why I said you need a money and or a skill set. You really need both. But with a greater skill set, you can rely less on money. With a lot of money, you can rely less on a skill set. But still being an idiot and having a lot of money, you're going to get caught immediately. So you need a little bit of both. I did say that there was only 14 points, but there's 15. The 15th point is where and how to choose your final destination location where you're going to start over. I recommend choosing third world countries, rural areas, what number one rural area okay as far away that you can as you can get away from people and 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 anything and still survive part two of number 15 which is where to how to choose and where to choose 
is third world country or non-extradition country. They're usually the same thing. So anybody who doesn't get along with the US, and in my case, I have been in non-extradition countries and still had the US bothering me, let's say, because US marshals at a certain level of US marshal, maybe not US marshals, probably US marshals, but definitely some of the rogue elements of the US government that were looking for me, uh, what we will call alphabet soup people, people with three letter names or and or people working for branches of the government that don't exist on paper, will gladly go to a non-extradition country and kidnap you, take you to an extradition country and say they found you there. So that's really the last thing is just how to choose the location. I do appreciate you guys toning, tuning in. This is the whole video. That's everything. That's everything you need to know about starting over and creating a new identity. And questions, comments below. Let me know what you think. If you want me to go more into depth on one of these points, I will in another video. Or if you want to see more stuff like this, let me know. Thanks for watching. Bone out.